David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have a very unique and interesting pen from Visconti. Um, one which is made from a material that I would have never thought uh, could be or should be used to construct a pen. And that pen is the Visconti Millionaire. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and the features of the Millionaire, talk about what I care for, what I don't care for, share a cautionary tale in regard to how you should not handle this pen, uh, then show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, the Visconti Millionaire arrives in this box. Uh, inside, we actually have a, a very nice uh, wood lacquered box. I kind of like how the uh, the front of this box has a, a flap on it, so it makes it easier to remove the box inside. Uh, this box flips open, uh, and we have a little tray. I've already removed the pen. Uh, and the inside is actually covered with like a faux leather material, which is very soft. The tray lifts up, and underneath we have a couple of things. First of all, um, we actually have a, a nice little manual uh, that uh, this isn't Visconti's typical generic manual, which is distributed with the majority of their pens. Uh, this one is actually specific to the Millionaire collection. Uh, it's in five different languages and covers what went into the making of this unique pen, some details about the materials and things like that. Uh, it's actually some very interesting reading and useful information rather than just marketing drabble. Uh, also, we have this little tube here, which contains something special, which I'll show you in a bit. Okay, enough about packaging. Let's look at the pen. And this is the Visconti Millionaire. Uh, the main thing that makes the Millionaire different is that it is made from marble. The uh, cap and the barrel are made from marble. Uh, the marble is cut actually into the three centimeter square bars and then hollowed out and reinforced and then turned on a lathe and then finally polished. Um, the result is a pen that while the overall weight is significant at 60 grams, uh, it's lighter than you think a pen made of marble would weigh. Uh, the Visconti actually comes in four different colors. There's a, a Valencia cream, a rainforest brown, a uh, Iswa green from the Alps, and a, uh, a Portoro black. Uh, the, the green is the most solid of the colors, and uh, as you can see, the other three varieties have uh, significantly more uh, veins to them. Let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, the finial on the Millionaire is larger than most standard Visconti pens, and it does not utilize the uh, my, Visconti's My Pen system, uh, where on some of their pens you can actually change out the Visconti logo for a gemstone or astrological sign or your initials. Uh, you know, I'll give Visconti credit. It's a bit tough to see here, but the finial is perfectly aligned with the clip. It always annoys me when it's rotated by a degree or two, so it's very pleasant to see when it's aligned correctly, uh, or at least correctly in my opinion. Uh, the end of the cap uh, is a high quality resin, which transitions into what looks like a, kind of a double ring, but it's just a single ring with a trough in it. Uh, then we have the traditional Visconti clip, which is inspired by the Ponte Vecchia Bridge in Venice, Italy. Uh, and on this green model, the clip is filled with black lacquer. Uh, the barrel is perfectly straight, uh, and then we have a rather wide cap band, which says Millionaire on one side, and some alternating Visconti Vs on the other. Uh, there's a small step down to the barrel, which is again perfectly straight, uh, and then uh, an angled step down to a resin end. And on the back here is an insert which has the number of the pen. Uh, this one is 140 of 988. Uh, here, actually, you can see with a microscope that uh, the engraving on the zero uh, looks a little bit wonky. Uh, and that's something with the naked eye you really can't see. But you can just see here uh, in this other view that the O or the uh, zero isn't really quite straight. Uh, you know, I wonder why 988. That just seems like a random number. You know, I like knowing the meaning behind things. And it kind of bugs me a bit when I can't figure it out. So uh, there must be some reason for that particular number. Uh, the cap twists off 
And we have Visconti's 23 karat Palladium Dream Touch nib. Um, this particular nib is a medium, and you know I'm very fond of Visconti's Palladium nibs, uh, but this one especially is very nice. Uh, it seems a bit softer and wetter than some of my other Visconti nibs, and has a hint of feedback that I find very, very pleasant. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Next, we have a rather long concave section. You know, I find this section to be very comfortable. The length really affords you the option to grip the pen in a number of different areas. Uh, it doesn't really lock you into gripping the pen in a specific area like some pens are prone to do. Uh, the section actually transitions to the threads, which are not sharp at all. Uh, my guess is they designed this pen to have the longer section in order to minimize the marble, which would just add significant weight to the pen. Uh, the cap does post, um, and it does post securely. Uh, it does not post deeply, however, and the cap actually weighs more than the rest of the pen. So posting the pen significantly really backweights this pen. I really wouldn't recommend that at all. That's not comfortable. Uh, now, Visconti calls this a pen a piston filler, uh, but it's rather unique. It's not a piston you twist. It's rather more of a plunger that you press and then you stick it in the ink and then pull it out and extend. Uh, it doesn't have the largest ink capacity, similar to a converter, uh, but it's decent enough. And, and I actually like this filling system. Um, remember when I showed you this little container a while back? Well, let me show you what's inside. What it is, is a rollerball section. Uh, that it's what you do here is you twist this on and now you have a rollerball. Uh, now this actually would be useful when you're flying. Uh, in my experience, fountain pens are rather temperamental on planes, but with this rollerball conversion, you could continue to use your pen on flights with no issue. And this rollerball is very nice. It's extremely smooth. Now, the first thing that went through my mind when trading out these sections was, what are you going to do with the fountain pen section? I thought that if you put it in this little carrying case, uh, that the plunger would actually get depressed and ink would just get all over the place. But no, check this out. It just fits right in, and the section is actually making uh, contact with the container at top. The plunger doesn't actually even go all the way down to the bottom, and so it doesn't make contact in there. So you can leave the section in here inked, and nothing should happen to it. So it was just a pleasant surprise. For a second, I thought I had discovered a fatal flaw with this uh, little container, but that wasn't the case. Actually, let me just trade this back make it back to the fountain pen and put this away. Okay, let's talk about the marble. Um, first of all, it is uh, very cool to the touch. Uh, my first concern when seeing this pen was the durability of the marble. It is stone, uh, and so it has to be rather thin in order to make it uh, not weigh so much. And so I was really concerned about it breaking or developing cracks over time. Uh, something nice that Visconti offers with the Millionaire is a lifetime warranty on the marble. Uh, if something should ever happen to the marble, you simply send it in, and I believe there's a nominal service charge of like $20 or something like that, uh, and they will replace the marble. Now, since the marble can vary so much, I'm not sure uh, what they would do in a situation, let's say you just broke the cap. Um, would they replace just the cap? Or uh, in that case, the marble might not kind of match. Or would they replace uh, the, the marble on both parts? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully, I'll never have to find out. You know, I really like this pen. Uh, I personally find the green model to not be as gaudy as some of the other three. Uh, it really fits my personality a bit better. Uh, you know, if I was getting a, a countertop for my kitchen, I might choose one of the other options. But in regard to a pen, I'll stick with the green. Uh, is it a little gimmicky? Yes. I don't think we're suddenly going to be seeing lots of manufacturers coming out with marble pens anytime soon. But does the pen work? It certainly does. Uh, and I really like this palladium nib. Um, of all my Visconti pens, this very well might be my favorite nib on any of them. Now, in regard to this nib, I have for you a cautionary table. Once upon a time, there was a young man who had just received his millionaire uh, that he had purchased the day before. 
and he wanted to use the pen but was too lazy to get out of his chair. So he reached up into his 24 pen case and found the pen by feel and then attempted to pull it out with his fingertips. It was at that point the rather heavy pen slipped out of his hand and in the subsequent panic and juggling somehow the cap separated from the barrel and when the pen went crashing down to the ground it struck the hardwood floor in the worst position possible. Nib first. And this was the result. Not pretty. Uh, you know, I actually sent this back to Visconti and uh, they felt it was beyond repair. So I had to uh, purchase a replacement nib and took it as an expensive lesson to be more careful with my pens. Now, I've seen nibs damaged actually worse than this uh, and have them repaired by talented nib meisters. So I actually plan on having this one worked on uh, and then given a, a special grind so that I can have something a little bit different on either this pen or I believe this nib unit will work on some of my other Viscontis as well. So it was rather expensive, but a lesson learned. Now, the pricing for the Millionaire is a bit peculiar. Um, you can find it listed in a number of places anywhere from $500 to $2,000, which is quite a broad range. From an authorized dealer, the price typically is in like the $1,400 range. And I believe some of the lower price models don't include the rollerball conversion, but you can find ones with the rollerball conversion in that lower range as well. The Millionaire is unique. Uh, it's well constructed and it performs very well. Um, while it is cool to have a pen made from marble, for me personally, I, you know, I don't feel that the value it brings to the table equates to a $2,000 price tag or even the $1,400 price tag. Like I said, I have no real issue or qualms with a pen. It is an outstanding pen. It just boils down to what you're willing to pay for these features. So there you have the Visconti Millionaire, a very unique pen made from unique materials and as you'll see in the writing sample, it actually performs very, very well. So now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and the aforementioned writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Visconti Millionaire. And we're gonna compare it to a bunch of other Visconti pens. Um, first of all, we have a Divina Elegance. Then we have an Opera Elements. Then we have an Opera Metal. Then in regard to some other ones, we have a um, Millennium Arc Moonlight. Then we have a uh, Rembrandt. Uh, and then we have a Hall of Music Rock that has some magnets in it which are attracting to the other pen. So here we go with the writing sample for the Visconti. Millionaire. This is a medium nib, and the ink that we're using today is Mont Blanc Irish Green. Uh, this is what the color looks like. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite greens. Uh, that uh, it's a really nice dark green. Uh, here it is in comparison to uh, like a diamine apple glory, which is actually, these are probably my two favorite greens as far as a darker green and then kind of a more vibrant green. And then here it is in uh, regard to the Roaring uh, Klingner, uh, Verduna. Uh, Verdura, excuse me, Verdura. Uh, but all three of these are really nice greens. Uh, and this is the bottle that it comes in. Uh, it's a real nice bottle uh, that uh, makes it real easy to fill. You kind of tip it over in here into this little reservoir, uh, and then you could fill just about any nib size from here, and it's a real nice bottle. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, 
There we go. We just got out of the screen just a tiny bit. Um, I mentioned it before, but this is one of my favorite Visconti nibs. Uh, you know, I have this palladium nib on a number of pens, uh, but they all have their own personality. And this one, uh, you get some decent line variation out of here. It is very wet and very juicy. Uh, and you can see here in regard to wetness that it is a very wet nib uh, and very pleasant to write with. In regard to reverse writing, it's a little scratchier, but it gets the job done. And then in regard to fast writing, the feed has no problem keeping up whatsoever. And as I said, this is a very wet and juicy pen. So, what we have is the Visconti Millionaire. Um, it is a very unique pen, and the more I use this pen, the more I like it. And like I said, this specific nib might just be my favorite in all of my Viscontis. So, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.